Okay, new day. I think this black paint's all dry. Time to put this puppy back together and see what she looks like and plug her in. All right, let's get rolling. Okay, so need some spacers. These are a galvanized three-quarter inch bore designed for building ducks. At the harvest store, it's either a four standard uh, three-quarter inch washers at 75 cents a piece, or two of these at a buck a piece. So. This one out. Here's kind of a boner. I just bought these new tires and an inner tube. And apparently there's a leak in here. It's taking about a day to go flat. So I don't know if I damage it when I put it in. Or there's something sharp inside the wheel. Anyway, I found this whole new tire and wheel down at Garden uh, Supply for about the same price I just paid for the tire alone, not including the tube. So it wasn't very good shopping there. The only downside to this one is there's no grease fitting. So, let's go ahead and grease this puppy up. This linchpin makes it nice and quick to change this. If you're getting another flat tire, you just take the tire off, take it to where your air is at, as opposed to trying to push this thing to where your air compressor's at, or vice versa. All right, let's see the other side. Alrighty, got both wheels on. That's pretty easy. Let's go ahead and put this handle on here, which lets you tip it over and also latches it. This baby's been all painted nice, bright yellow. It's got a key here. Just have to figure out which way to put it. Okay. There we go. Half inch wrench. I recut the threads on this bolt here. It's a tap and die. Should have ground the head off, get all the excess paint off of there over the years. Alright, cool. So it tips our puppy over. And also the latches it when you're dumping concrete and it won't tip over accidentally on you. Alright, next thing we're going to do is put the old flywheel on here, or the pulley. That hooks the belt to the motor, which drives the gear, which turns the tub there. I'm going to put a little anti-seize on here. It doesn't have as much problem taking this off the next time as it did this time. It was a little bit of a challenge. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Okay, if I remember properly, this is the way it goes on. All right, I have to get a persuader here. So much for my paint job. It's flush. Same old half inch wrench. I guess I should have painted that a bolt, eh? All righty. So we got these two broke spokes, but it was like that when I got it. Worst case, we go out and buy another one of these pulleys. I checked, they are available around 50 bucks. Alrighty, two handles. It's just one inch galvanized pipe from Lowe's. We got the three inch holes in there. These are just a three inch hitch pin. And a nice little handle there. When you're working, pouring concrete, you don't want these handles in your way.
Well, let's see how it's balanced. It's pretty good. Handle's about the right length. Nothing get bonked in the face. It's nice. Very free. Before this, you used to have to take and put chains on it, pick it up with the front end loader to move it somewhere. This would be a lot nicer. Okay, so we got the motor in place. There's just two bolts, two studs that are welded onto the uh, frame here. When you want to tighten the tension on the belt, you just slide this motor down. There's the slotted holes here where the studs go through. So it's a pretty uh, simple and clever way to do that. I put these two bolts here to wrap the quarter in it, but uh, just because they're existing holes, I see now that this is all put back together, it's going to be too close, so that's not going to work. I'm going to have to go ahead and move that. Maybe I can find a bigger bolt and use that existing hole down there. That should probably work okay. The only thing we're going to do right now, all we have is a uh, male plug on this guy. I've got a waterproof on-off switch coming from China on a slow boat with a nice big uh, green and red on-off button. So as soon as it gets here in a few weeks, I'll put that on. Probably, I don't know, put it two feet from the end of the uh, plug there. It's a bit of a pain when you're mixing a lot of concrete. You have to go and plug this in and out all the time. Plus, inevitably, you step on this thing and bend it or it gets crammed in the mud. Just a little splash of color there. Had some uh, chrome spray paint left over for who knows what sitting in the basement for years. So went ahead and did that, uh, covering that the same color as the handles are. Yeah, so I'm sure by now somebody's probably saying, so what's the deal with the colors? My goodness, you know, it's a concrete mixer, right? Well, it's two things. One, if you're going to do a project, you might as well have a little bit of fun, make it creative. And two, there's no guards in this thing, and you're out there working, so make it white and yellow. It's going to pop a little bit. You're not going to have an accident quite as easily if everything was painted black, I would think. Well, I guess that capacitor has taken this time to uh, become no good. I don't know if I damaged it when I took it out of there. Do the paint job, what happened here, but the only way that metal starts is if I give it a little spin and didn't have this problem before I took the thing apart, so uh, I don't know. I guess I have to get a new capacitor for it. So I'm not going to be able to show you the thing spinning right now, guys. Sorry about that. I'll just show you what a motor with a bad capacitor looks like. Just needs a little help. That's what the capacitor does. Give a little extra spark there. 